Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Godfather Godfather Minute, Minute. in which we discuss the Godfather Part 2, Minute Minute 41. 41. Alex, you're pretty dead. Alex, is that you? (laughs) Yes. Does everyone know it's you? Oh, yes. Was I supposed to introduce myself? Oh, you're right. You busted. You're right. I'm Alex Alex Robinson. I'm going to hear you, Alex Segovia. Are you Alex the Great? Are you... uh, Yes. What are the other famous Alexes? Alexander Graham Bell. Are you Alex Alex Graham Bell? Al- Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek. Uh, Alex Corleone. Alex Hamilton. Alex Hamilton. <laughs> who lot. are you? Who is the real uh, <laughs> Alex Robinson? Anyway, that's who I am. And I'm Andy Robinson. And we're here to talk about Minute 41. 41. Alex, oh. repeat after me. A minute. A, a minute. A, a, a numero numero 41 41 you got it i gotta remember the quarant yeah yeah 41 I mean, you know some spanish a little uh, bit say pequeño this. s-o-c-k-s um one o'clock because <laughs> <laughs> cuatro is four. Oh, that's right Quaranta. Yeah. well i guess it depends what time people are listening to it yeah so. i don't want to listen to it yeah there was a podcast called uh, the Pod F Tomcast, and it would start off by saying it's nighttime on the internet, and that was like the introduction to the show. And people would get mad in the reviews. They would say it's not like you might be recording this at nighttime, but I'm not listening to it at nighttime. Oh, like, that was their complaint about it. Like, they and they were, would say it's nighttime on the internet. Like the introduction to the show would say it's yeah. nighttime on the internet. So oh. welcome to this. Diva. And people would get people would leave angry reviews. Uh, saying, what do you think about that anger? I think it's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. I guess so because then you can never say, "Oh, Merry Christmas" or "Happy Halloween," right? Because it just if it's always- also especially if it's a comedy podcast, if mm-hmm. you're like complaining that something isn't accurate on a comedy podcast, oh, that seems, I see. Yeah. Seems like yeah. <laughs> I come here for hard facts, not, not <laughs> stupid metaphors. <laughs> I come here to laugh. Damn it. <laughs> I'll be confused as to what time it is. I was late. Thought I was late for work. Well, it makes me wonder now. What are the things that we r- routinely say that people okay. don't like? Okay. We don't want to open up that can. We don't want to know. <laughs> Let's talk about minute forty-one. Okay. What do you think? Uh, in minute forty-one, Mikey <laughs> explains to his confused consigliere that the would-be killers were helped by someone on the inside. Mm-hmm. While Mrs. Fredo shrieks that there are dead bodies outside her window. Yeah, that sounds like a song. Dead bodies outside my window. <laughs> you're, you're singing a song, right? Or use that. I want respect. <laughs> uh, well, let's start with that last part first. Oh yeah, let's start there. So, is the fa- so first of all, watching of this. Okay, you know, there's a couple. Of, I keep rewinding. Let's start at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, you. Uh, let me just say, you are, as they say, all over the place. I, I'm scatterbrained. My mind's in a muddle. <laughs> so first of all, let's start with uh, Mikey's assertion. It started last week, but um, he said that um, they were killed by someone close to us inside, mm-hmm. uh, and they're very frightened that they botched it. Yeah. How does he know all this? Didn't we figure this out already? Well, I, we we but it seems like he keeps adding on to things. Like, I've already, last week he's like, he thought they were already dead. Okay, well, how does he know that? And now, already, not only does he know, he knows that there's someone close inside. He knows that someone's nervous that they botched it. Like, what? How does he know the two guys didn't just off themselves? Because that's, come on, why would they do that? But I, I feel like this is kind of like a, it's like giving Mikey superpowers. Like, so, so he's so, the Don, so he must know everything that's going on. And so, like, in order to set up a story, he has to yeah. prove that he knows everything that's like, it seems. So you think you're saying that you don't buy that he really would know all this, but the writers of the film are adding this dialogue and that part of his awareness to move the story forward. Partially, but I don't understand why they felt it necessary to put mm-hmm. in the fact that he knows they're already dead. Because, like, yeah. why would the, the, them discovering that they're yeah. already dead doesn't really? It just goes, wow. I guess Mikey was right. I guess. He, well, this part always confused me. Yeah. Even when I, even before I became a uh, an official aficionado of the film, expert, 
I don't even want to say expert. Dude, you, you dude, you know how many hours you spent talking about GF1 <laughs> in a podcast? But <laughs> I still can't explain this. A lot of it was just like making dumb jokes. So yeah, it's making dumb hard jokes. To really, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Responding to people upset about mm-hmm. our time code uh, references. Answering questions that we ourselves have asked. Yeah. Have asked. <laughs> So, you know, learning who the real Andy Robinson if was. If we look back at previous minutes, yes. What I learned is that Mikey, Mikey, well, we're going to talk about what he learned from Pop. Oh, you we'll could say we'll that get again. into that. Yeah. But Mikey, I think, has to assume that it was someone on the inside in order to get that close to assassinate him. It's not like people just walked into the compound. But they have like a thousand button men walking around. Like there's a hundred security guards. How does he know one of those guys? Oh, that it's not. So you're asking, how does he know it's someone close? All these these things. He he seems to have like a lot of expertise based on no information. Like he knows that he thinks it's someone close to them. He thinks that they're already dead. He thinks that they're like. Especially very frightened that they botched it. Yeah. Because that way he could only assume that if he knew for certain that it was someone inside close to him, someone that's loyal to him. Right. Because be if it's not someone loyal to them, then yeah. why would they be frightened? If it's some button man who did it. Yeah. Um, you asked. I cannot answer. Yeah, it's it's a strange. Did you did you learn anything? And like when he said, it almost says when he says like someone close to us, and they're very frightened that they botched it. It almost makes me think he is thinking that he knows who it is. He's like he's 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 giving information that would seem to be like, well, this seems to be pointing towards someone. Yeah, you know. Um, well, I mean, my best explanation, I, I said it last minute, is that he that he knew. It had to be someone close in order to get that close to him, and right. th- and therefore they are frightened because it's someone close. And now Mikey is on to it, yeah. and now he can uh, Mikey can figure it out. I, and I, that the people would be dead because whoever masterminded this wouldn't just be some button man; it would be someone who who masterminded it and then would kill the button man to prevent those button men from ratting on whoever is behind this covering right. their covering their tracks yeah maybe that's why at a minimum he, he we can say well at least he knows that they're dead that that makes sense because someone bigger than a button man is going to try to pull this off and someone that big is not going to be stupid enough to let the button men live but we learn that it's fredo who is certainly stupid and he's weak so yeah, but why but, Fred, he, but I don't think Fredo killed those two guys. Well, then who killed? So then the traitor. Then there's another traitor still in the compound. Someone else working for the. I don't want to spoil it and say who's working behind, who's masterminding this plot. But I'm, I would think that someone else is there to cover the tracks. It's like another layer, another buffer. So is that person very close to them? How many traitors are there? In I this? mean, Johnny Ola was at the party. <laughs> you, see, that seems too obvious to me, though. Yeah. Johnny Idol is just, hey, you know what? I got to deal with some, I got to deal with some part of some curtains. Like, oh, let me check out your bedroom and see what I can hook you up with some dra- You need drapes? You need curtains? You need any of yeah. those things. They're different, well, you know? <laughs> well, I, it is appropriate in this scene as I'm Mikey Roth always can- makes curtains for his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. That's my best guess. But but I think you're right. It is it is confusing. It has always confused me. Every time I've watched this. If I was Tom, Mm -hmm. I would almost suspect that Mikey set this up. Whoa. To purposely flush out those... To rattle rattle the the, the people's... Like, flush out people who might be nervous and and things like that. It's an extreme way of... Or an extreme variation of putting out misinformation to flush out the rat. Exactly. Wow. That's heavy. So they there there really weren't machine there really wasn't machine gun fire. There re, it re, Mikey really had squib set up in his room. <laughs> it's it's squid set up in his you know room. What he said? It would be so great if Mikey did stage this whole thing. Yeah. And he and he announces to the whole crew, he's like, I need uh, if you come forward and tell me now that you're behind this, you will there will be partial forgiveness. And 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 even though I will he not said it, be mad. Yeah. <laughs> Even though he sets it up about half the people in his organization all step forward. Like, oh, Marky, I was involved. <laughs> it's a great way to clean house. 
Well, because, especially because Mikey seems to have so much knowledge about it. If yeah. I was Tom, I'd be like, he seems like, because yeah. this just happened like 10 seconds ago. He seems awfully. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That makes more sense yeah. than, than what the real explanation probably is. Well, I like how Tom says, uh, you don't think that, you, you don't think that Rock on Neary had something to do with this? <laughs> Immediately, he, 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 he yeah. I, it's funny. I think that it's a great way for him to not, to sort of put highlight away from him oh, as of course, a possible yeah. traitor. <laughs> like, wow, you don't think Fredo or, uh, you know, Connie. Maybe it was Connie. Oh, she couldn't have done it. Well, I noticed that when when Mikey is describing it, he says, um, uh, they botched it. Mm, he says they're frightened yeah. that they botched it. He was, se- he was 70 he... years he was seventy years ahead of his time. What using you, oh, using the non-gender specific. Pronoun. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it made me wonder if they were kind of like, this almost feels like they're kind of like cluing in the audience as to like, like what's going on. So yeah. it's almost like <laughs> Connie, because you know, like Connie was mad at him earlier, yeah. in the, earlier in the Connie morning. Was it Ma- Merle? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Merle pops out of the bushes. Yeah. He comes out and he says, I was right. This does concern me. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to Troy Donahue. <laughs> yeah. Academy Award winner, Troy Donahue. <laughs> Assault on the Fighting Nerd. <laughs> I should have gotten an Academy Award. He's actually just shooting up the whole cast. It's like an active shooter event. It, I think it would be great if uh, Tom asked, like, uh, Mike, Mikey, what do you mean by they? He's like, you, you know, Johnny Ola and uh, Hyman Roth. They were behind it. <laughs> like, totally spoils the story. I think it was Fredo. I think Fredo, I think it was Johnny Ola. I think it was Hyman Roth, but with the help of his Sicilian messenger boy, Johnny Ola, and using, taking advantage of Fredo as an inside guy. But Mikey, why would Fredo do that? <laughs> Trust me, Tom. He's my brother. I he probably over. thinks there's something in it for him. He's yes. tired of being stepped over, <laughs> but he wants people to know, because he, he's trying to think like those yeah. around you would think. So he's like, yeah. let me say, I'm Fredo. <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> Well, but then, Mikey, if that's the case, what will be your next steps? Well, I'll have to go to Cuba and play cool. And uh, I'm off. I'll probably pretend he is. I'll have to do the whole rest of the movie yeah, yeah. in 30 seconds. If I know Fredo, at some point, he'll slip up. <laughs> yeah. Probably around something related to alcohol. Tom, make sure there's a plane waiting for me there, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> make sure it's a two-passenger plane. He's still my yeah. brother. Is my mother still scheduled to die next February 6th? <laughs> I can't take action against my brother until my mother's gone. Who are we making him sound like? It's, it's changing. It's like I know. <laughs> it's like Fredo meets the jaw broken Mikey meets uh, kind of like a Groucho Mark. <laughs> it still counts. Yeah. Yeah. So then he says. Uh, so after Tom says, "You don't think you don't think Al and Rocco had anything to do with this?" He says, uh, "All of our people are businessmen, and mm-hmm. like that's what their loyalty is based on." Yeah. And this is what he learned from Pop. Right. So do you think that is Mikey saying this as a um, as if this has always been true for their organization? Or is it now like uh, like money has always been the loyalty for everyone? Mm -hmm. Or is it like the people we have with us like now are businessmen? Like they're not loyal to Pop or the family. They're only in it to make money. Hmm. Like, it's not like a personal like thing that the people who came up with Vito. Who I'm are, gonna say it's it's been true all the time. You think so? I think so because look at GF1. You got plenty of traders, all who are ambitious and want something that's in it for them, uh, and they're not sticking with loyalty. You got Polly. Mm-hmm. You got Tessio. You got Carlo. I mean, these are people that are cl- well, not, not Polly so much, but Carlo and Tessio are very close to the family. They got well, pretty good gigs. But Tessio, only after the Don died, he did it. Yeah, but still, he's... but I'm saying he wouldn't. He, he would not have. He did not betray the Don. Like he was loyal to but, the Don, and once the Don was gone, he's like, all right, now Mike. But it was a business decision, right? And that's why Mikey at the funeral at the Don's funeral said it was the smart move. It's the better business decision, right? Although we argue that it wasn't because Mikey found out about it and killed him. So. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, he could have really But as a not. move, as a business move, it really yeah. made more sense because the Corleones were in decline, moving yeah. out west. 
Well, plus, I mean, not just that they were in decline, but that Mikey's whole thing was like, we're going to be completely legitimate in five yeah. years. What's Tessio going to do yeah. in a completely legitimate world? He's yeah. not going to open a hat, become, hat a, stand. become a cop. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> open a fish. You think that's why he was like, well, I guess I. Yeah. <laughs> you can't teach an old fish new tricks. <laughs> I guess I've got to go to Barsini. I got to go to Bonnie? <laughs> <laughs> That's the irony. He was trying to transfer to another crime family, but he was recruited to be a cop, which is the greatest way to be in a crime family. Is to be a cop? Oh, to sort of be like a, a dirty cop. It's also, a great asset to not a, a not, a, not an undercover cop, a dirty cop who is works for a crime family. Like you, Mc, McCluskey. Yeah, you want to uh, be McCluskey, but, but not necessarily because McCluskey, I believe, Finest in the city became a cop and then was corrupted whereas I think if you're already in a crime family and the boss says I want you to get a job as a cop you'll be our inside man yeah. like the the departed I right, think the that departed. Was yeah yeah that's very powerful because the loyalty it's not like the, the crime family is ever going to rat you out because they've got something good great going for them whereas if you were a cop that was corrupted they can always say like hey we got you on the hook now now you have to do what we're telling you to do or we're going to bust you and kind of operationally it's the same thing but it's a huge difference because mm. that person always has that on the back that weight on the back of their shoulders like when is that shoe going to drop I mean when am I going to go to work and get arrested as opposed to the person who that was their intention all along yeah. was to yeah I guess then, then they're worried, when it, am I going to get whacked? Because <laughs> either yeah. way, you're worried about when the when the penny's going to fall. Well, but there's no incentive for the crime family to kill their mole in the police. Not their mole, their their button man who is now a cop. Because it's as if they are still in the, they're still in the family. There's no why would the that that cop ever betray the family? Well, if they ever got busted, I guess if they got yeah yeah, so I guess it can happen. I guess it's like probably any, does that. <laughs> yeah, I guess any yeah. any. Uh, yeah, they're probably more loyal than a cop that they get from the outside. Mm-hmm. But um, but at the end of the day, you got your Henry Hills. Yeah, right. They're all rats. <laughs> they're all rats. Oh, they're all rats. Um. <laughs> so so then he gives pops advice. Yeah, which is to think as those around you think. Yeah. And he um, says, try to think as people around you think. Now, on that basis, anything is possible. So, what does that mean? We we gotta we gotta Alex, we gotta break this down. Let's break it down. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> there are three possibilities. Okay. Now the first one. is he's referring to in general when you think like people around you. Anything is possible. Meaning like someone around, like if you put yourself in someone else's shoes, you might find yourself thinking things and going places that you never would have imagined yeah. prior to that. Just in any anything scenario. Is anything is possible. Anything is Literally possible. anything is possible. Yeah, that scenario. Newborn one. baby could count a thousand grains of sand in a second. That is totally <laughs> possible. If you, you, you could fly to Uranus faster than the speed of light. Please keep my keep Uranus out of this show. But, but, but you. <laughs> but Bob. <laughs> So the second scenario okay. is anything is possible based on his comment about loyalty. Because he had just said our people's loyalty, they're businessmen, mm-hmm. and that's what their loyalty is based on. Meaning that someone Therefore, could have lured them away with more with Hyman Roth always makes money for his partners. Yes. Mm. yes. Always, always <laughs> makes money for his partners. That's yeah, true. <laughs> What? Is it true that he always makes money for yeah. his partners? Because he's about to lose that record with Mikey. Because he's going to have Mikey killed. Well, that's what I mean. I, I think it's true, but it depends on your definition of partners. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he would that's say, true. oh, no, Michael Corleone was never my partner. Yeah, he you know? never uh, he never brought the million. He never gave him the million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Not so, a partner. Because so, he so. says, if the million dollars is not there, I know I won't have a partner. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> and don't forget, if you're not a partner. It's not to say, <laughs> I'm always honest about my partners. Don't forget. <laughs> that's not to say if you're not my partner, you won't make money. Mm-hmm. The contrapositive may be true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a logic problem. <laughs> Small potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> so the last scenario yeah. is it could mean that anything is impossible in this scenario of who the traitor is. 
So anything is possible in, regard in regards to, to the traitor. In regard to who the traitor hmm. is. Yeah. Meaning the traitor could be anyone because all of our people think like businessmen. In other right. words, they could be lured by money. And yeah. so any of these chumps, even <laughs> even Al, even Merle, even Connie could be yeah. lured by money. I wonder if he does include Connie. Because in. she needs money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to guess not. No. I mean, because he seem, he doesn't seem to suspect Fredo. And you'd think he would suspect yeah. Fredo before he suspected. Yeah. Uh, although, I don't, we'll have to keep an eye on it if he suspects mm. Fredo at all. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a part where he's like, you know, you're my brother. You know, like, yeah. at that point, is he trying to lure him in by being nice to him? And mm-hmm. kind of, is he really being nice to him? Or is he, is he kind of giving him rope to let him get relaxed and yeah and, uh, that's wow i never i never thought that that was happening but mikey's good well have to he's keep, pretty we'll have damn to keep good it, uh, keep it in mind yeah that whole thing like i thought we could go out get a drink yeah and so he's he's priming yeah he's testing everybody and i even anything that possible he, i even think that even though he just revealed to tom that tom is the only one he could trust mm-hmm. i think he's testing tom here too you think he's saying he said that to everybody yeah i think he's, <laughs> he, has a, this he is, tells everyone you're in charge will of god <laughs> so, it only, turns out to be a big gang war after he leaves. Yeah. <laughs> not only that this is the seventh assassination <laughs> attempt that mikey has staged <laughs> That's like no one believes it anymore. They're just like, all right, well, I guess we gotta go yeah. find these guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, which um, do you think it is, Alex? Which do you think the advice applies to? I'm gonna say it's so. The first one is anyone can be lured by money or any. Oh, if you put yourself in the mind of people, you can you can find yourself going anywhere. Anything is possible. Second one is everyone's motivated by money, therefore anything is possible because everyone can be bribed away with a better mm-hmm, deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, the third one is anything is possible because well, if we if we think like others, then any of these people could be the traitor, right? Well, isn't that different? Which I guess different it is the, the second s- one. No. Or how is it different from the first one? I guess or is, the, that's almost like a combination the of the second The second thing is the loyalty. One. Right. Because he had just commented that people's loyalty is yeah. based on business. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think because he's, you don't reference the Don and just... You, you don't just reference the Don for at any old time. Mm-hmm. So I think this applies to the big picture. Anything is possible. We should have made a note of how many times um, mm. Vito Corleone is brought up in the in the movie. Yeah, uh, I can think of two times so far in GF two. In GF two, so uh-huh. far, Connie yeah. says, "I'll be true if my father is still alive." Yeah. And then in this one, uh, he says, "You know, Pop told me to think mm-hmm. that way." Are there any other times so far? Obviously, yeah. at the beginning of the movie, we see him as a kid, but in terms of him being referenced, how big of a of a shadow he has left behind? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. We'll start so, keeping a tally. Yeah. I'm also thinking in GF1 after Pop dies. Right. He's referenced. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, so anyway. Yeah. Interesting. Um, <laughs> I would. <laughs> well, so, so getting back to the think around the way those think, who are mm-hmm. around you think. At first I was like, well, that's kind of a. Um, How to win friends and influence people strategy. <laughs> you read well, that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I did, Andy. I did read that book. All right, I'm afraid we've hit that paywall, dude. What? what, what, what? If you want to continue listening to the show, dear listener, go to StarWarsMinute.com slash support. Whoa, I beg your pardon? Huh? Go where? <laughs> did I say Star Wars Minute? You did. <laughs> Sorry. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. All right, we'll do it over. Right? Right, okay, go. everyone, here we go. Okay, really, should we really take, do it over? Take two. All right. Uh, sorry, bro. It looks like we're hitting that paywall. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? I said it looks like we're hitting the paywall. Oh. <laughs> if people want to hear any more, they have to go to godfatherminute.com slash Star Wars. Don't think Star Wars. Okay. Oh, it looks like we hit that paywall, everyone. <laughs> whoa, 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 what? What? <laughs> Go to uh, godfatherminute.com slash support to hear the rest of the episode. We'll rate the episode. We talk about uh, all sorts of fun mm-hmm, stuff. That's right. And uh, so, yeah. Um, are you a Patreon? <laughs> no! <laughs> Wipe out. <laughs>